Hello, dental friends. In this podcast, I talk with Minder Gauss about the workflow of taking a picture and making a post on Facebook. This podcast is sponsored by GC and it's all about the GC November online symposium, which is taking place pretty soon. Have fun listening. Welcome to today's show. I'm connected here with Mindaugas. <laughs> Hi, Mindaugas. How are hey. you? Hey, Georg. I'm good. How are you this Friday morning? <laughs> yeah, a Friday morning is a great time for us parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While the kids are sleeping. Yeah. Mine are out in kindergarten, so it's peaceful at home at least. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a great time. We are going to have a, our first lecture together, actually, in November, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. The topic will be direct post endo. It's interesting because I have, for example, one case where you kind of corrected my occlusal anatomy. In the Facebook? By giving hints afterward. Yeah. <laughs> of the placement. <laughs> so it's always fun to lecture with you. We'll see if you have uh, some correction ideas for my cases as well. Oh, yeah, of course. We can see that. Yeah, we have to look through <laughs> that. <laughs> like I always say, there's always room for improvement, you know? Yeah. So on my end, I guess you won't be too harsh on my end, though. You know, uh, I stopped. I stopped doing endo, like for two years now. But I have some cases with like I did uh, five, six years ago. Uh, I'll have in the lecture, so we'll, we'll see how <laughs> how it looks. I mean, we don't have to show any X-rays. <laughs> it's really not necessary if you talk about directs. <laughs> yeah, but if if it's a case you know it's it's always nice to have a full picture full you know? protocol <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's how i'm raised you know in facebook <laughs> doing full protocol yeah actually i mean we are both active on ripe and it kind of we already did a podcast like i i wanted to look it up it was already three years ago or four years ago something like that yeah yeah Yeah, so, and it's interesting. I mean, we both don't post as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. Now, Ava kind of took over whenever I see like this top 10 in Ripe who's posting mm -hmm. a lot. I'm kind of like, yeah, I was already uh, once in this top 10. Yes. <laughs> uh, but, but time flies and sometimes it's just very hard to keep up. And it's not always even the cases. I feel like I have more cases to post now. It's just the lack of time to actually sit down and do them. So We have still the photograph fever, so we still document a lot of cases, but just don't post them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I think about that. There are actually so many people that are doing great dentistry and actually taking pictures of it, but they just don't post it and we're we're not aware of them. So... I always try to encourage people, you know, if, if you're really taking pictures and you're having nice cases, it's very, very good to be out in the open and actually sharing them with oh, everyone. Yeah. Sometimes people ask me how I started with lecturing. And I'm like, uh, basically, I started posting and writing and full yeah. crawl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same story here. <laughs> it's like uh, the, the road to success, you know, start posting cases and if they're great, then it's, it's just a matter of time before someone picks you up and asks you for a course. Yeah. Actually, on my side, it wasn't really ask. Uh, nobody really asked me for a course. I kind of approached them with giving them pictures as well, where we're kind of really fast on track. Okay. Yeah, we want you. <laughs> okay. I guess that's a nice topic to talk about how you, you know, what kind of impact you can get from taking pictures of your work maybe we start with how the process of taking a picture and putting it on facebook or instagram actually works or because my workflow basically didn't change in all those years mm -hmm. did your kind of workflow changed no i update my keynote templates from time to time maybe you know different font for the text or a new logo or whatever but otherwise i'm very straightforward with my protocol What I would like to change is I would like to start shooting raw and have more editing. But it's impossible at, at this moment because it would take uh, just too much time from my work. So uh, I'll just keep shooting JPEGs and, you know, just doing some simple corrections. 
Okay, interesting. Because I was told uh, shoot in RAW right away. I kind of never changed it. Mm -hmm. So I always have the RAW and the JPEG. And mm -hmm. basically I download the pictures of the face uh, in on my computer and then put them into Lightroom. And kind of, uh, I mean, Lightroom is supposed to like use the RAW and you can mm -hmm. probably do a lot more than I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I'm basically just clicking on cutting for 16 to 9. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the so cutting to 16 to 9 is a feature I just found out recently. <laughs> 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 Before that, it was just like, oh, that's like a nice cut here. And then uh, switching it over to Keynote and uh, resizing it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So actually, this is kind of speeded up the process a little bit. Okay. But uh, basically, that's it. Just takes a picture. I still have my Canon 70D with my matte splits I've been using for ages. Okay. The only thing is when I read that matte is kind of out of business that I went on eBay and brought a second matte splits just in case. Okay. Matt's is a, a, a wireless now. Yeah, it's a wireless. wireless. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. I mean, it's... I kind of choose them because when if I ever want to have this cool pluralized filter, I know that it's supported. Okay. That was one reason. And actually, people on Style Italiano also said it's a good flash. And I got it quite for a reasonable price, actually from a dentist on eBay. Okay. So cool. the thing with the med splits, you only always have to have fully charged batteries. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you will like switch it on and there's like a green light uh, blinking when it's ready. And sometimes it's not uh, blinking. We're like, you want to uh, have the camera in place and kind of just wait for the flash to be active. And that's the moment which kind of sucks. Yeah. But you are, have a wired flash, right? Well, I have a lot of photo gear. So it's like a dental hobby of mine, I guess, uh, dental photography. So actually, today I should get my new camera. It's very exciting. I was thinking a lot about it because, you know, it's when you have a hobby related to your business, your, your hobby becomes your business expense and th th that's easy to spend, you know. <laughs> so you, you, sometimes you, have, you just have to hold your horses not to buy unnecessary stuff you, you will not use to full potential. So, yeah, I'm waiting for my mirrorless Z7 from Nikon, full frame, lots of megapixels. Uh, I'm not really looking at that much better image quality because we know the limitations of you know macro lens and diffraction and uh, all these things but i had a z6 uh, for a week uh, i got it from my friend just to try it out the actual workflow the actual shooting through the mirrorless camera was so much better than the dslr one i mean the electronic really? viewfinder is a game changer because even when you shoot you know the distal of the lower third molar when it's like dark as hell uh, that's not a problem for a mirrorless camera because you always see bright picture so it's very easy to focus and you know at least i'm a manual focus shooter for dental mm. so it's it's quite important and then there's things like focus peaking so the pixels that are in focus uh, are lighting up in the screen so you actually know if you're sharp or not uh, so that's that's very very nice the, the only drawback was the weight balance. It was a bit off because the body is very small. So the heavier lenses, especially if mounted through the adapter, they're, they're quite heavy on the wrist. But uh, Nikon has this new Z-mount macro lens. I might go for it later on. And yeah, uh, it, should be, it should be a good combination. And yeah, this brings me to the flashes. I gave my wired ring flash and my old macro setup to my dental hygienist so she can take pictures. I really encourage everyone in the practice to do that. And yeah, so I, at the moment I'm using the, the wireless R1 kit from Nikon. But even here I'm, I'm looking for improvement and I, I have something yeah, on my mind that could be cool. Yeah. Actually, the fun thing, place where I work in Bayreuth, on the Pro Ergo micro, where was also a Canon 70D, like mm -hmm. the same uh, I had. Mm -hmm. So I brought a, a used macro lens, a Tamron lens, which was quite cheap because the autofocus was not working. And mm -hmm. since I'm also only using the manual, it doesn't play well for me. And so I switched also these Canon 24mx flash on it. So mm -hmm. I have two cameras sometimes in my room mm -hmm. if I want to use it for the interior, mm -hmm. like with paper bouncers on it yeah. and everything yeah but actually i recently kind of discovered on instagram this minish patel 
who's doing mm -hmm. really nice shots and has mm -hmm. also like kind of a special bouncers, really expensive ones, of course, who are custom made and kind of a system. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the pictures are really looking good. So I might visit, book my first photo dental photography course. Okay, cool. <laughs> for next year, <laughs> just to learn a bit more <laughs> from a professional. Because before that, I never took a photography course. I, I feel... Mm -hmm. I basically just kind of found out what I, what gear is recommended, brought it, and it was trying out a lot. Mm -hmm. I also never changed on my, um, Canon, the settings. The 70D has a really nice feature that there's like a lock mechanism that mm -hmm. you can't change the ISO and whatever. Okay. For over, for, oh, I don't know, seven years or six years, it stayed the same. Mm -hmm. You should check whether the button is not stuck, you know? It's stuck for sure. <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> it's now hardwired, you know? I think I could glue it uh, as well. I haven't knew about this feature. Actually, it could be a, a good selling point for dental offices looking to buy a camera setup because I always get complaints from dentists that they buy a camera, give it to all the practice to use and someone always changes something and the pictures are you know ending up looking weird so this is actually cool 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 concepts from the canon on this end yeah actually if you have a zero more of the canons they don't have this feature because it's entry level and the yeah. 70d is like a mid level mm -hmm. it's not a full frame but mm -hmm. i think it's completely okay even for lectures of course if you're planning to lecture on the seattle study club you might switch to full frame very s soon but i don't <laughs> think i'm not, not yet there <laughs> yeah there's still there's still time <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you have to say one drawback of the full frame is i know it from for example from a microscope i have a sony alpha 7 mm -hmm. something there Actually, this camera I switched on purpose just to JPEG because these walls are so huge. Mm -hmm. It really, really takes up a lot of space on my hard drive. Mm -hmm. And with this microscope pictures, since I kind of tried to connect it with a flash to get better pictures, but it doesn't really, it didn't really work out. Although, um, for example, the Flexium microscope where I tried it, Due to the standard photograph equipment and the lens, you can mm -hmm. attach really easy flashes there. Mm -hmm. But still, just didn't change a lot. Yeah, because the, the microscope is not a very good macro lens. You know, it's just the, the optics are not there. Or I guess depending on the scope, you have to have aperture control. I don't have it in my Flexion. And even if it, if it would be maybe a bit more streamlined to take pictures through the microscope, the quality will, I guess, never be there you'll still have to take your camera. So if you want some quality, you'll, you, you still have to have a proper camera. If you're doing it just for, you know, insurance or just to take a quick picture, then even the LED light source and the microscope, it, it will work quite well. I mean, it's a bit like some people or some dentists in Germany have like this inter camera mm -hmm. direct on their dental unit. They're very expensive, these cameras. I'm like I know. to 5,000 euros. They're very convenient usually <laughs> because all set up to be saved automatically on the computer. I started a documented case of it, and but as soon as you want to do a lecture out of it, you realize that it's really a shitty... <laughs> camera it's it's like comparing i don't know iphone to old all type of webcam you know 640 by 800 pixels it's like the, the image qualities yeah like i think tragic. even the new ones with hd something still would but for patients it's great so mm -hmm. i would say even the microscope pictures are for patients very great mm -hmm. to show them but do you have a workflow do you i mean you shoot your pictures you have it on your sd card and you Plug the SD card mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. computer. Yeah. Because actually a friend of mine told me that he's using kind of the Lightroom tethered shooting mode. Ah, okay. And yeah. um, kind of it. has a connect. Actually, that's my next try. I just mm -hmm. brought a different Mac, old MacBook Pro mm -hmm. to have it in my office and to connect it mm -hmm. and see if this, if this works. Because sometimes it's kind of taking quite some time for example if you look at your sd card look at the dates and feel like oh i haven't looked for a month on this sd card <laughs> <laughs> really have to find out which patient <laughs> was it okay uh so in that regard i've tried i 
iFi wireless SD cards for a while. Uh, it was very convenient because while the camera was idle, the, the images would transfer to the uh, computer. The, the one drawback was it needs a Wi-Fi. So if your computer is currently connected to one Wi-Fi, it has to reconnect to the SD card. So ideally you have to have a, se a separate Wi-Fi card just for the camera. It drains the battery of the camera quite a lot, so you have to charge your camera every second day. The biggest drawback for me was is you take pictures, like for a consult of a patient, and then you want to show the pictures for him, and you have to wait. So I found out it's just quicker just to plug in the, the SD card at least once a day. I'm using OneDrive for my backups. So all my pictures go, st go straight to the OneDrive. I only recently found out that there's uh, like something called, I guess, camera picture import or whatever. So uh, whenever it automatically detects the SD card, checks whether there are new pictures and automatically downloads it to the folder named by that date. So it's very convenient. So at least I have them sorted uh, by the day. I also used started using practice management software online, cloud-based. So I can easily assign pictures to the patients by the oh. procedure. So whenever the patient comes back, you know, I can see what I did uh, three months ago without going through the folders, trying to find the pictures, trying to find the names. And it's really cool, really handy. So from there, I just download the pictures. It's, it's very cool, especially if I am doing, you know, uh, some indirect and the pictures get lost through the five or six appointments. So now I only have to open up the patient's card, click the pictures, download them in one folder, and then I can go to my uh, keynote presentation. Actually, I still don't have any cloud service uh, for that. I even, for some time, I kind of try to use some keywords in Lightroom, but the thing is, whenever you change your computer, the kind of keywords are lost, or I never found out how to transfer mm -hmm. these things. But usually, my practice management system only gives patient basically a number, mm -hmm. and I just use this number in this folder. So, mm -hmm. so there's kind of a little bit a decryption as well. Okay. <laughs> so I don't have to find this one Smith guy, which uh, which we have plenty of in uh, Germany, Schmitz. Okay. <laughs> so it's just the number. And then I basically see all the pictures. The problem is, is if you have a patient where you took a lot of pictures, that's kind of a mess. And I even had the problem that, you know, the Canon pictures, they have kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. After some time, they repeat. And with one patient, I really had to do, do open a different folder within the folder because the same numbers approached again, <laughs> which is <laughs> quite rare where we talk about 10,000 numbers. And yeah. just this patient had, uh, by accident, uh, by chance, uh, these, the same. The same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you should take a look since you're a Canon shooter. I couldn't find it on my Nikon, but I, I, I went to one course about how to implement, you know, digital technologies uh, for better communication and you know, patient status capturing. So there was a little bit about photography. The guy who talked about it, he's a Canon shooter, and he said that there's an option in Canon to uh, set a file name to actually be numbered by the date. Oh, so okay. it, it would be very convenient because it would kind of sort it out itself and it would be easier to look for if, if the file gets lost. I mean, there's advantage for this number thing because I only need to remember when I have a lot of files on the SD card, which was the last number of this patient's <laughs> picture. <laughs> so I just uh, for dragging and dropping. And actually, I have to look it up uh, with dates. It's, it could be convenient. can be nice. <laughs> You know, whenever it's, it's a cloud in Germany, everybody's like very scared. Is it secure? Is it GDPR mm -hmm. acceptable? I mean, for for my private pictures on the iPhone, I have also OneDrive um, mm -hmm. and it's uploading immediately. So it was kind of cool to even like install it on all cell phones and it's uploading everything. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have one terabyte of on online cloud servers, um, mm -hmm. which is also nice. Uh, very nice. Usually, sometimes when I'm doing a lecture and I'm kind of having a script for the participant, I started to just like blending in a QR code at the beginning so they can download it. Mm -hmm. Because people kind of uh, start using tablets as well, so they can kind of follow the lecture on the tablet as well. Mm -hmm. 
and if the light is sometimes very unforgiving in hotel room spaces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, when it comes to um, the quality of the pictures on the screen <laughs> oh, okay. uh, yeah. on the tablet it's much better to follow up properly okay yeah or actually asking a hotel to bring in a huge tv if possible yeah actually i don't know uh, I, i find that lecturing with the tv is so much better than with the uh, projector unless it's a very good one you know it's for sure because the tv is so much much better um, because when you bring sometimes when we have the uh, beamer projector mm -hmm. it really they just bring something in you kind of have to see where you put it in the room mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the picture is big enough with the big tv you kind of already always know what you get it would be nice if like a foldable one you can bring yourself yeah. <laughs> i already thought about uh, buying my own projector as well so i really actually know what kind of quality i will expect it's also a nice business write-off <laughs> maybe could use with the kids as well <laughs> that, that would be cool going down the rabbit hole for the documentation of cases what what's your take on video taking uh, through the scope uh, have you ventured into it not really i mean I like showing videos of certain things, but uh, let's be honest, if it's an endo case, nobody really wants to see how I put my file inside out. Maybe it's a bit f funny to like see the Eddy or ultrasonic and so, mm -hmm. but it's basically boring. The only fun thing is in retreatments when you uh, use the XP shaper and you pull it out and it's full of Kutapercia all mm -hmm. wriggled around. But even on the video, you don't really see it. Um, for composites of, uh, of the uh, upper centrals, it's quite nice to have a video because you kind of have direct vision. Mm -hmm. So where a video is kind of nice. For some polypotomy cases, it's, it's nice how uh, when they see how you do the polypotomy and kind of put the MTA or biodentine onto the canals. Mm -hmm. But it's just like really small, short sequences. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to see how long you cure the composite. Mm -hmm. um, for polishing, it could be a fact. For example, when you look at Instagram accounts like this Indonesian guys, they are posting a lot of video. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes sense for social media. For lecture, it's kind of... So-so. You could record like a hands-on workshop mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with uh, different camera settings. So that would be, could be nice. Mm -hmm. so whenever you cure it uh, you talk to, to for 20 seconds into the camera <laughs> <laughs> or you can cut it afterwards if you don't mind you know post-production <laughs> the problem is uh, cutting afterwards actually it's taking also a lot of time but um and that's what i uh, that's why i asked because i i tried venturing into it i still have i don't know half a half of a terabyte i guess of the video footage it's just crazy amount of time you have to actually download everything and then upload it into your mm, iMovie or whatever and then try to cut it and then computer gets crazy because it's very resource hungry uh, process so I think I still want to get back to it I think I saw one practice in Ukraine offering the patients uh, DVDs after the treatment is done so it's wow. actually like the, the ultimate documentation. You take the pictures, you take the video of the procedure done, and then the patient gets the whole package of to see what was done. I don't know it's, if it's a very good idea or a very bad one, but... Yeah. It's a very bad one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the point of view, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's like... Only it's it's like with the gdpr i, I guess yeah. the, the the initial idea of it was a very good one but in reality we see it's 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 not so <laughs> yeah. but actually uh, what i saw already brought uh, ricardo tonini kind of had at the um, adec dubai also streamed uh, like one lecture with workshop directly to facebook mm -hmm. he had a uh, is, is, uh, it's called an Atem Mini Pro mm -hmm, Box, mm -hmm, yeah. where he kind of could have plugged in different video inputs. Mm -hmm. For example, one was from his lecturing computer, one was from his iPhone, who was just connected to a ring light for filming him directly. Mm -hmm. Then he had a different camera just for the workshop part, so he could switch between these sources and kind of do the workshop. That could be interesting as well for these Zoom meetings uh, mm -hmm. to have it a bit more interaction. And when you 
could talk about Endo. I mean, with you would kind of mount camera at a space where they kind of just see the whole rubber dam process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then the scope, and then maybe just um, electric measurement for Endo. It could be interesting that you have multiple view. Someone would kind of switch what's now interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or if you have, that could be a future for education. It's for workshops. It could be. It feels like uh, we were now like in what second year of this crazy, crazy times. And it feels like people are still uh, hungry for the good old in-person hands-on courses. W webinars are very nice, but they're also not, not the same as the, the good old lecture on the stage. So coffee breaks where you talk with us. <laughs> Just oh. crazy, crazy <laughs> and never... <laughs> And actually, I guess going out and changing the environment is always nice. Yeah, it's always nice. I think we covered basically everything you need about photography. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Although I might think nobody's really smarter after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to sum it up, just get a camera, Lightroom, and that, that's it. Yeah. The only drawback today is that the Lightroom is only available in these monthly fee okay. apps, which kind of sucks. So my, my, my advice would be that don't get a Lightroom, just go straight to the keynote and that's it. Yeah. Oh, really? That, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, well, I'm, I'm not developing RAW, so I, I'm working straight with JPEGs. So it saves some time and some money. Yeah, okay. I mean, the only advantage of Lightroom is that it's a non-destructive cutting mm -hmm. of the images and you kind of can always go back to the source mm -hmm. to kind of see what was the original image. At the beginning, I used PowerPoint on a PC, not Lightroom. Um, so maybe the keynote, uh, the, I mean, keynote, maybe the keynote is just better for this workflow. It really is. It's very good. So we have to buy a Mac. That it, Eventually, it will be more expensive than Lightroom, but... <laughs> <laughs> so you get can buy a used Mac with this H HDMI output mm -hmm. for 700 euros on I eBay. I mean, it's quite interesting how much these old Macs are worth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, they're still supported. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. So thanks for the talk, Mendogas. It was a pleasure to, t to talk to you and I guess see you later in the next weeks for the lecture and the uh, yeah. questions and answers. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.